you've probably noticed your period's missing, maybe due to dieting, overtraining, or stress. And I get it, you care about how your body looks, you don't wanna just throw away all of your progress. And the thought of eating more or gaining weight literally terrifies you. It makes you anxious. It makes you not even really want to get your period back, which is terrible. And I'm going to change your beliefs in this video. So make sure you go get a high protein snack, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Because what if I told you the research shows you do not need to gain an ungodly amount of weight to get your period back? So you do not need to sacrifice your body image or your mental health for the sake of getting your cycle back. If you don't know me, hello, my name is Haley. I help women like you get your cycles back, get them regular, and then focus on aesthetic goals without sacrificing your hormonal health. Again, because we don't want to get back into this, this mess. So today we are diving into the science of period recovery and how it can help you work with your body, not against it. No extreme weight gain promises and no extreme diets just sustainable strategies backed by science that you can apply today to get your period back and foster a healthy relationship with your body. And I'm gonna send you off with a sustainable framework so you can apply all of this research to your current recovery plan. Okay, I think you can agree when I say this, most recovery plans fall under two extremes. Just gain 10 to 15 pounds and you'll get your period back, or you're fine, just keep doing what you're doing and your period will magically come back. Neither approach applies both you wanting to get your cycle back and also caring about your fitness. A landmark study published in the American Journal of Gynecology, it was called the REFUEL trial, followed 76 active women with menstrual issues for 12 months. And the game changer was not just gain weight, it was a modest increase in energy intake on a daily basis. Only about 18% more, so three to 400 calories per day. I had to change locations because my thing died. My little light died and <laughs> Daylight savings happened. So anyways, carrying on. That amount of caloric intake was sufficient to restore menses for most of these women. So it was about a um, large banana and a couple tablespoons of peanut butter per day. On top of that, about an increase of 5% of body weight was again sufficient to get their periods back. For a woman who is say 140 pounds, that's only seven pounds it's not the end of the world. Not only that, all of their levels improved. Thyroid, estrogen, testosterone, progesterone, all of these levels improved. And here's also where it gets really exciting for those who care about body composition while trying to get their cycles back. Research shows it's not just how much you eat, it's also the quality of food that you do eat. So fats are your freaking friends. A Nova Southeastern study showed that increase in dietary fats was fabulous in promoting hormone production and leading to quicker recovery from functional hypothalamic amenorrhea. So think avocados, nuts, seeds, olive oil, all of these really good fat sources can help with your hormone restoration. Carbohydrate timing can also be very pivotal. So what I've seen in my personal clients, <clears throat> having an adequate amount of carbs at each meal can help promote ovulation, specifically pre post-workout and also at night. If you find that you wake up at night a lot, maybe in the middle of the night you're hungry or you go pee a lot, something that can help is having some carbs at night or with dinner relatively close to when you go to bed. Do not wait. This is gonna help you stay asleep throughout the night because what can happen is your hypothalamus, obviously your control center in your brain, when it feels threatened, AKA you're in fight or flight, sleep is a bit of a threat. You don't wanna sleep because essentially we're on hyper alert mode. So it'll wake you up. So in order to keep your body asleep or at least to your best ability, do have some carbs right before bed. So like protein and carb, say have like a yogurt bowl with some granola and fruit and a banana, and that should be good for a night snack. Now, there's this overarching caloric intake of 2,500 calories and on a baseline, yes, that is a really good level to aim for as a minimum threshold. But that doesn't mean that every single person has to get to 2,500 calories. It is very based on you as a person. And I've had many clients who had to get to 2,300, 2,500, 3,000. So as much as this is more of an average, do not put a label on it because it could take less and it also could take more. Now let's move into exercise that respects your fitness goals, but also respects 
the fact that you need to take a little bit of a break. Research shows that over-exercising suppresses sex hormones independent of energy availability. So what that means is you could be eating a lot, but if you are over, like truly over-exercising, and by the way, that is a lot of exercise, it will not matter. But here is the good news. You are likely not over exercising you just need to scale it down a little bit so the refuel study that i mentioned earlier showed reducing volume by 20 to 30 percent while maintaining intensity often works prioritizing sleep and recovery is more effective than just eating more and you can include some strength training to maintain the muscle mass that you have built so when you think of it this way it's not one extreme to a next extreme it's strategizing what is best for long-term results elite athletes do this all the time to optimize performance and something that you have to understand is your body cannot be go 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 all the time there has to be pullback there is always opposites in this world there is night there is day there is sun there is moon there is life there is death you need to have rest if you have been going for so long and lastly mental health is part of the solution here what a lot of period recovery content misses is your mental health isn't just a side effect it's a piece of the psychological puzzle because research shows that stress directly impacts the hpa access which controls your menstrual cycle sleep Deep quality affects recovery more than people realize and relaxation techniques can help with cortisol regulation and improve hormonal balance. So rather than viewing mental health separate from physical health, integrate these evidence-based practices. A daily five minute breathing exercise, your breath is the only thing, only part of your autonomic nervous system that you can control. You cannot control anything else. Prioritize seven to eight hours of sleep each night and practicing mindful eating patterns while you are trying to get your cycle back. So that is tuning into your hunger and fullness cues naturally, even if you are tracking. This is something that I like to practice with my clients because again, I do not believe in extremes. You can track and you can also include some intuitiveness within that. So the transition from tracking to intuitive is a lot more seamless than just, oh, I'm going to delete my fitness pal and then you re-download it or you track in your head. It's just not a very tangible way to go into intuitive eating. But that is the goal. The goal should be to intuitively eat because we don't want to be grandmas thinking about numbers, right? And there's many studies that prove taking away some numbers and tuning into that mind-body connection is much better for the health of your relationship with food and your relationship with your body. Okay, now we're going to head into the sustainable framework you can follow in order to get your cycle back, applying the things that I just went over. Okay, phase one is going to be the assessment. This is going to last about one to two weeks. You're going to track your current intake without any judgment, without any changing. I know this might be hard, because we like to impress people. We like to be the perfect, perfect of perfections, but try to do this non-judgmentally. I want you to note your exercise patterns. Is it impulsive? Are you doing it out of love? Are you doing it out of compensation for what you ate? What are the patterns that you follow or, and what is the story going on inside of your head that is making you do that impulsive action? And three, check in with your stress levels. Rate them from a level of one to 10 on a day-to-day -day basis just to see kind of where your environmental stressors are at. Phase two is the strategic addition. This would be from week three to week eight. You're going to add in 200 to 300 extra calories from nutrient dense foods or fun foods. Who the hell cares? Just get in some more carbs and fats. Focus on healthy fats complex carbs and reduce your training volume by 20 to 30 percent and phase three is refinement this is going to be from week nine to week 12 you're going to adjust based on how you feel your energy your mood any biofeedback that you're seeing and by this time you would have gotten your cycle back so then we can gradually introduce some more training or higher intensity training throughout all of this you're going to focus on rest and recovery and that is not ever going to change for the rest of your life and the equip health research showed that women who worked with specialists or with a team so like a dietitian a coach and therapists were more successful at restoring their cycles and maintaining a positive body image. However, if professional support is not in the books for you, I definitely suggest finding a supportive community that you can kind of bounce some ideas off of, collaborate, maybe relate to. Community is such an underrated part of this whole journey. So there you have it, folks. Getting your cycle back does not need to mean sacrificing everything else because the research is clear. Modest, strategic changes in nutrition and exercise can restore a healthy cycle while also respecting your body goals. So just remember, you do not need a massive weight gain. Again, disclaimer, unless you are extremely underweight, 
Okay, this is for the average Joe. Disclaimer over. So what they found was an average of about 5% increase in body weight. Quality of food matters just as much as quantity. Exercise modifications beats elimination. Mental health practices are physiological interventions. One thing I want you guys to understand is this is not about going back to square one. It's about optimizing your health so you can perform at your best, both in and out of the gym. Because your period is literally your fifth vital sign. It is a vital sign of health. And if it is missing, there is something wrong and you need to make some changes. And honestly, maturing in the fitness space is having your priorities change from looking the leanest you've ever been to actually prioritizing your health over aesthetics. Hierarchy of needs, health, then aesthetics, my friends, not the other way around. And of course, if this resonated you, make sure that you drop a comment, hit the like button. And as always, my coaching application is linked in the description box below if you guys need some help along this journey. And then, you know the signature sign off. I will see you in the next one.